Question for uh, Dr. Church. All right. I won't take a minute to ask. Um, in the, uh, I, I don't just support and uh, try and help out the those who dissent from the ridiculous uh, belief of Christianity, the, the horrible idea of vicarious redemption. In other words, uh, the idea that by watching another person suffer, an innocent person suffer, that you could be freed not just from your debts or your sins, but your responsibilities. You could cast your sins on a scapegoat. I don't just oppose that disgusting belief. I oppose the Judaism from which it's plagiarized and the Islam that plagiarizes from it. And I give uh, publicity and exposure whenever I can to those who were brave enough in old times to oppose this, this nightmarish belief. And one of the great opponents of the, of the Islamic totalitarianism in ancient Persia was uh, the great Omar Khayyam, perhaps the greatest poet of old Persia, whose Rubaiyat, I'm sure, is known at least to some of you. And my favorite verse of this uh, comes from the Robert Le Gallien translation, and it takes the form of a question. The, the, the quatrain is in the form of a question. It says, and do you think that unto such as you, a maggot-minded, starved, fanatic crew, God gave a secret and denied it me? Well, well, what matters it? Believe that too. To this magnificent astronomer and scientist and physician and humanist of Persia who opposed the cruel, sadistic, verminous, ignorant mullahs of his day, I borrow the question. What is your authority for saying that you know something that I don't? Chris, I'm giving a probability argument. As you said before, you can't disprove the existence of God, and you can't prove beyond any doubt that there's a God. I'm giving probability. I'm giving cosmological, teleological, moral, consciousness, reason, mathematics, all of those things I listed before. It's open. The evidence is open to everybody. And this is related to your uh, 70,000 years uh, point that you just made there. From a Christian perspective, God has always had a revelation, even before Christ. Uh, it talks about the fact that God has always had a witness. There's three witnesses. There's creation. Everyone has creation. There's conscience. Everyone has conscience. And there's Christ. Now, Christ, true, only came 2,000 years ago. But his sacrifice of atonement, excuse me, his sacrifice of atonement is retroactive to everybody that lived before him. So can, he's always had a witness. It is quite convenient, and that is the very nature of God. You're absolutely correct. Well, I got him to say it. Um, you see, if we, were, if we were only discussing ontological questions, uh, that would be all very well, and it could be quite amusing. Um, I could say that you require a higher degree of standard of proof for your proposition than I perhaps do for mine, and you'd probably accept that and so forth, and we could go back and forth. But we'd be paltering again with the essence of the matter, which is this. The, the difference between the, the theist and the deist is as follows. The deist says, may not make sense without some kind of designer. The theist says, when I tell you what to do, Christopher, I have God on my side. Your, the deist says, he can tell what God wants of me, what length I should shave off the end of my penis, if I'm a boy or have a male child, uh, or off uh, the clitoris if it's a female child. He knows through the exactitude what the proportions of that should be, what the diet should be, what the dietary laws ought to be, who I should sleep with, and in what position. Uh, and various other things. You, and, and since God doesn't ever directly appear and say, do it this way, it's done for him, and this is really convenient, by human representatives who claim to act in his name. So that's why I think your standard of proof should be a great deal higher, because if you, your, you, the reason this point is important to you is because it would mean real power in the only world that actually exists, which is the material world, of you over me. And you wonder why I'm not keen. Okay, the, um, the material world is all that exists. That thought that you just mentioned, Christopher, the material world that all that exists, is that thought material? And if it is, why is it true? That sounds like casuistry to me, but I mean, I, I certainly think that, uh, that everything that I am capable of thinking, saying, 
feeling and so forth does depend on my continued existence as a, what shall we say, mass of molecules or... Um, yeah, I, I, shoot, shoot me in the head and I, I can't go on like this. <laughs> and I won't be coming back to bother you either. <laughs> Question? Sure. Nor am I going anywhere after that's happened. Christopher. And I don't wish it otherwise, by the way. I don't wish it otherwise. God gives you what you desire. Sir. 